Okay, in this one here, I just wanted to go over the impact that elasticity of demand and supply have on the burden to the producer and the consumer, and also the size of the dead weight loss. Um, elasticity is how responsive consumers or producers are to a change in price. In this first graph here, you have more of an inelastic demand curve. It is more um, vertical than it is horizontal. And these, again, when you think about the determinants, you have a more inelastic mostly because of necessities or lack of time. Um, it could be something that doesn't take up a high portion of the consumer's income, or it could be that there aren't a lot of substitutes available. And so that's why you have a more inelastic demand curve. Um, and so in this one here, what you can see is that consumers are not responsive to a change in price, meaning that the percentage change in quantity demanded is much less than the percentage change in price. And so therefore, price is going to have a much higher impact or larger impact than the quantity size is. And so when you shift your supply curve to the left because of the tax and you look at the new quantity and the new price that is created, you can see here that the consumer has a much larger tax burden than the producers does. And again, that's because they're willing to do it. For their, they're not having um, a large number of people drop out and buy something different, but rather they're willing to kind of eat that um, eat that higher price. And so the two boxes combined together is the amount that the government is going to give. And also you can see that the consumer surplus would um, decrease by this area. Um, below the demand curve and above the price. So this whole lot here would also change. The producer surplus would change a little bit in um, this amount here, and then this part here would be the producer surplus above the original supply curve and below the red line because they do have to give a little bit here to the government. Um, you can see here the dead weight loss isn't that big compared to where you have an elastic demand where you have the consumer who is very responsive to a change in price. So maybe there's a lot of substitutes out there or maybe they've had a lot of time and they can find something else again with the substitutability. And so in this one here when you again shift that supply curve to the left the price goes up but not that much but the quantity really goes down. And so as a result you have a larger dead weight loss or efficiency loss and the burden of the tax is shifted more on the producer than it is on the consumer. The total amount that the government gets is as two boxes combined. When you look at the producer surplus here, it's going to be above the original supply curve and, uh, and below the red line here. Um, and when you have the consumer surplus, you have, again, below the demand curve and above this new equilibrium price. So this one here has a pretty small uh, consumer surplus. For this one over here, you have the inelastic supply curve. Time is the determinant of supply for the elasticity of supply. And so in this case here, the producers have very little time in order for them to shift and react to the change in the price. There's three different time frames when we talk about supply. There's the immediate, which would be a perfectly inelastic supply curve. And then you have the short run, which is more representative of what this one is. And this over here would be the long run, where you have the producer has more time to find ways to be able to change. Maybe they can open up a new factory, or they can hire more laborers or more machines. In this case here, they really only can do just a little bit of stuff in order to react to the short amount of time. So what you have here again is you have that supply curve shifting to the left. You have the price going up. And again, this is where the um, suppliers are not responsive to the change in price. And so they're still going to be um, supplying around that same amount. And because the suppliers aren't responsive, they're the ones who are really going to be affected by the burden to pay the tax to the government. Um, the consumer pays a little bit, this box right here, 
but you can see that the major shift, because they're the ones who are inelastic, are going to be the ones that have to give the amount to the government. So this whole amount here is the amount that the government gets, and then you have a dead weight loss that's not very big because it's dependent upon quantity when determining that dead weight loss. And then again here you have this elastic supply curve. They must have had a lot of time and be able to respond to the change in price. You see that the quantity is going to um, change more than the prices. You have the price that is going um, up and then as a result, because they can be responsive to that change in price, the um, burden of the tax gets shifted on to the consumer. And so the amount to the government is the whole square. The smaller amount, because they have an elastic supply, goes to the producer, and the larger amount goes to the consumer. You have a dead weight loss, which is larger because it has more elasticity going on. If you have both like the same amount of elasticity between the, cons the demand and the supply, then the tax will be um, split 50-50. If you have a perfectly inelastic demand curve, then you are not going to have a change in quantity. If you have a perfectly inelastic supply curve, you are not going to have a change in the quantity because of it being completely vertical. And so as a result, all of the burden will go on whoever has the perfectly inelastic demand or supply. Hope this helps.